time must fade And the dawn will break this glass charade Maybe I will return and hope If maybe I will free my soul And I will wish me here again With the even tide slowly drawing in And I will wish me to talk to you about what makes good songwriting. When I was 16, it was like, good songwriting is Bob Dylan. Mm -hmm. There was no other definition. <laughs> it's Bob Dylan, right? Yeah. Um, just like the literary ability and the just how poetic he was. Of course, Bob Dylan is still good. So I have three things that I, I, I want to talk about. And I think only one of those things needs to be in all good songs. The one that doesn't necessarily need to be in it, although it typically is, is storytelling. Mm -hmm. Songs with a good story are fucking awesome. Yeah, they're just captivating. They're just amazing. And when you think about it, it really developed songwriting as a method to tell stories. Mm -hmm. So I think that in its truest form... However, though, there are some excellent songs that don't really have a story attached to them. And just instrumentals. Sometimes you just have a bunch of uh, like details and, and poetry and stuff that just needs to get out of your head, but it doesn't like it's not a story, right? It's just descriptive. And those are really cool. Like um, Sunshine on My Shoulders from John Denver. Mm -hmm. That's a good song, but it's not a story. He's just saying like, I like sunshine. And, I like nice days. And nice days. Which is totally cool, and the way he says it is interesting and mm -hmm. intriguing, but it's not a story. Um, so I, again, I don't think you have to have that. You have to use some form of literary devices. I think you have to because um, you can't just say "I love you" in a song, right? You got to come up with a cool ass way to say it. I was just listening to them on the way here, Civil Wars. Uh, I mean, I think it was their second album. So you think about. Their first song, they don't just say, man, I wish, like, man, you suck, and I wish we were, I'd never met you, right? The, the, the line is, I wish you were the one that got away. It says, it says a whole of a lot more than sitting at the bar with your buddy for three hours complaining about somebody. I think another example of that is, back to Bob Dylan, right? You have Sad Eye Lady of the Lowlands, sick song, like one of the best lyrics of all time. And then you have... Ten years later, he wrote Sarah. Like, same, about the same person. About the same person, his first wife, but one's not really a good song, and the other one's excellent, and it's just because it's, it's 11 minutes of just literary devices. Now, I think you can get by without either one of those, but the one thing that I think you can't get by without is sincerity. It needs to be true, even if it's written well. It needs to have some sort of authenticity to it. It doesn't have to be autobiographical. No, you can just make stuff up. You can make stuff up, but you you got to make me believe it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my biggest problem with pop music. Is it's not that it's or they you know they don't use a lot of literary devices, and they sometimes do. It's that like I don't believe you. Right. Right. You're not sincere. You're talking about going to a club, but like. Is that something you feel? Like, it's no, it's just gonna, you're writing it most of the time just to put it on the charts. Yeah. Um, so I think the the one aspect, if I had to choose one, I like all three of those, but if I had to choose one, it would be that. It's, I will, I have started to think over the last probably five years that anything is good if it's true, if it's honest. It could be honest, but what makes good songwriting is the ability to put a feeling into somebody else yes and i think you can only do that by being honest at least yeah. that's the way i say it. like make me feel like make me believe it one of my favorite songs that you've written is um out with the old uh -huh. and the way reason i like that so much is because when you're listening to it like you could play it and i i cover it and like i play it like all pretty like and i sing it high and it's all soft and pretty but what i like about it is that it's got that pretty um uh, chord progression but then the lyrics are just fucking brutal. Mm -hmm. They don't align. Where traditionally you're like, all right, if I'm intense, I'm going to play a minor, right? If I'm not, I'm going to play a major if something's happy. But it's this happy sounding thing and then you're just like slaying someone with lyrics. Because that's, that's, that's the point though, is like to 
have it be a light song because you are really out with the old. Like, right. if it was such a heavy song, then that would mean that you haven't moved on. But I guess that's yeah. a very it's a very it's a song to say. Screw it, I'm moving on. Yeah, it's a really but they don't, it's an out they don't the old line typically. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm like. I like that's what makes great songwriting is is taking those first aspects that make good songwriting and taking it a step further. For me, it comes down to story, like you said. Mm-hmm. I love songs with stories. I like to listen to a, a song and have an image of what's going on, which leads me to my second point is the imagery. Imagery is huge mm-hmm. because I really like to get a a thought, a, a, a scenery in mm-hmm. my mind. Me too. I'm big on of details. What is going on? Yeah. And and it's really hard to put in just the right amount of details without putting in too much mm-hmm. in a song. And a lot of that can be done in how you sing it and how you uh, write the personality of the person who's actually singing. And if it's you, if it's your personality singing, that's that's easier right. to actually get those details in to then put that imagery out there but the cool thing is is that you can make a group of people feel exactly the same thing but they all have very different imagery Mm -hmm. in their minds so they all are seeing something different while feeling the exact same thing that's what makes for good songwriting for me and that for me that falls under like literary devices from my second point exactly yeah like I like the way um I like how you say it, imagery. I always say detail. And also, I, it comes down to the first line for me. The first line is so, so important. I think it is the second most important line. If, you, if it, See, we're going to differ on this. I, I think the first line of a song is the most important. I think it's more important than the chorus, because you could have your chorus oh, right. that, down yeah. pat. You could have it all set. You could have, It could be the best hook in the world, but if your first line absolutely sucks... Mm-hmm then you've lost me because then you're just leading to the chorus like you good you songwriting song. does not serve the chorus right. a lot of people think that good songwriting is just to get to the chorus and to get to that hook no mm-hmm. you serve the song as a whole and the chorus is there to hold it together and the you chorus, don't need a chorus you, you don't even need a chorus but if you do rely on a chorus it's something to come back to, mm-hmm. to it's sort of a break from the story yep um, and that's why I think the first line is so important because it sets up everything. I actually like to think about it as you need at least two or three uh, who, what, when, where, how. So you have five choices to put in a first line. You need at least two or three of those. I've never broken it down like that. I'm, the way I always do first line is trying to do just something completely different. Like how do people normally start songs and I just do yeah. not that. But that's interesting. Now, I think I agree with you. The first line is so important, uh, and it's definitely more important than the chorus. But I think the last line of a song matters more for me. The last line? Because you want to close it out and keep people like, yes, that was it. Well, how I, yeah, so how I got, that's what, think about it, that's what you leave people with. You're right, your first one brings everybody in, but it's what you leave people with. And that's just my, my preference. I, I learned a lot from just reading poetry, like slam poetry, not like with a rhyme scheme. Mm-hmm. And those last lines, when they're done excellently, you're just like, you just da 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 da, and you're like, shit. And yeah, I've tried to do that with my songwriting as well because that's what you're leaving people with. But I agree, the first one for me, I always say that the first line is the second most important. But it's always how you end it. Punchline. It's yeah, like that punchline. Punch line. I get, yeah, that's the way to look um, at it. It's, but I still think that if you don't have a good line, if you don't have you a good first line, end. you can't get to the punchline. Yep, that's true. Because people are going to leave before you even get to that awesome end line. That's true. That's true. That's why I I can't I can't stray away from the first line being my absolute favorite. Yeah. The most important so- part of a song is the first line. Cool. That was good. That was a good discussion. I don't think I've ever had that discussion with anybody before. Should we play Out With The Old? Out With The Old? I do Out With The Old. What's up, what key do you do it in? I do it down in B. Okay. And then I sing it up the octave from what you do. Sounds good. Let's see what happens. I climbed up to see a doorway with my hair strewn about woods and you came out from your mirror and 
begin to show Yes, you handed me a poem And I tried to read it loud But with unknown illusions It just brought me down You want to take the next verse? Yeah. Okay, I didn't need you anyway. It's no different from what I told. Yes, it's in the 